Okay, so good day. Our first topic will be uh, relative equilibrium based on our syllabus. So when we say uh, relative equilibrium, we are to study the behavior of liquid in a moving container or a moving uh, vessel. So we have uh, first let's us consider horizontal motion of uh, containers. So for example, we have this uh, container. Let's say it's stationary or not moving. The acceleration or the acceleration is equal to zero. So if it is stationary or the acceleration is equal to zero, we assume that the liquid surface should be horizontal. But for example, this container is accelerated to the right. Uh, let's say the acceleration is now greater than uh, zero. It is expected that the liquid surface is now inclined at an angle, let's say angle theta with respect to the horizontal. Now, how to compute for that inclination or the inclination of the liquid uh, surface? So first let us consider one particle of this liquid. So this particle has its own weight. Since it is now accelerating, it is acted by, let's say that is the reverse effective uh, force, which is equal to uh, the mass times acceleration based on the second law of motion. A uh, second law of motion by a uh, Newton. So these two forces will be having their corresponding resultant. Now, let us consider these three uh, forces. So we have the reverse effective force is horizontal since the motion is horizontal and REF is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So we have the weight, and this is the weight, and the equivalent of weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and it is always uh, downward. Then the resultant of these two uh, forces, uh, let's say this is, uh, let's say R. So the inclination, or that is the angle, if we are to consider the angle between the weight and the resultant, let's say it is the same as uh, theta, if we are to check it geometrically. The angle between the weight and the surface is theta, the same as the theta, or that is the inclination of the liquid surface with respect to horizontal. Or you may review in kind planes. So this is the same as a theta, the angle between the resultant and the weight. So if we are to consider this triangle, we may uh, consider the weight and the reverse effective force, that is tangent. The tangent of theta is opposite. The opposite is the reverse effective force then divided by the adjacent side the adjacent side is the weight we have the equivalent of the REF that is equal to the mass times the acceleration divided by equivalent of the weight that is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity cancelling mass the inclination of the liquid surface tangent of theta is now equal to this is A over G That is for horizontal motion. Okay, for inclined motion, so for example, we have this container uh, placed over an inclined plane. Let's say the inclination of this plane is angle alpha. So again, if we have a container that is stationary or not moving, or if the acceleration is equal to zero, we assume that the liquid surface should be horizontal. Then, for example, this container is accelerated upward to the right. So the, the direction of the acceleration is upward to the right. It will have uh, two uh, components. So I say this is the acceleration. It will have a horizontal component. So let's say this is a x and the vertical component, the acceleration along y or the vertical component of this acceleration. The inclination is the angle alpha. So to compute for the resulting inclination of the liquid surface if it is now accelerating over an inclined plane. So again, let us uh, take one particle of this uh, liquid in this uh, moving container. So let's say this is uh, the particle. This particle will have or has its own uh, weight. And it is now acted by two reverse effective force. So since we have two acceleration, the horizontal and vertical will be having two uh, reverse effective force. So we have, if the motion is upward, and if 
has an acceleration upward ay so the direction of the ref should be downward so this is the reverse effective force along the y direction or the vertical direction then we have the component of the acceleration horizontal let's say ax so this particle of the liquid should be acted by a reverse effective force along x so take note plus that if we say reverse effective force that is the force acting on a body in motion or accelerating body it is always opposing the motion that is ref a force that opposes the motion or iner inertial force based on newton's uh, second law so these forces will be or will be having their corresponding uh, resultant r then again we have to consider the angle between the vertical forces and the resultant force so for the force triangle uh, we may transfer this one the ref along x so again this is the resultant then we have we have the horizontal acceleration so we have that is the reverse effective force along x okay then we again use the tangent so this is the tangent of theta that will be the inclination of the liquid surface moving on a, over an inclined plane the tangent of theta is equal to opposite that is the reverse effective force along the x direction this is divided by your adjacent side will be the combination of the reverse effective force along y or efy plus the weight this is uh, plus the weight equal to we have the reverse effective force along x that is the mass times acceleration along x divided by we have refy that is the mass times the acceleration along y plus the weight the equivalent of weight is the mass times acceleration due to gravity so how to compute for the acceleration along x and acceleration along y this based on this triangle for the components of the acceleration we will be having the equivalent of acceleration along x is basically equal to uh, that is the acceleration cosine of alpha then acceleration along y that's equal to the acceleration sine of alpha then if we have to substitute or we can now factor out mass we can eliminate mass so this is now the same as the tangent of theta is not equal to if you have to factor out mass that is the mass multiplied by a along x that is a cosine of alpha this is divided by factoring out mass that is the mass multiplied by a y a y is that is a sine of alpha plus okay, we have the acceleration due to gravity so canceling out mass we have now the tangent of theta is not equal to this is the acceleration cosine of alpha divided by the acceleration uh, sine of alpha plus the acceleration due to gravity so tangent of theta is equal to a cosine alpha over a sine of alpha plus the acceleration due to gravity that will be the computation for the inclination of the liquid surface for a container moving over an inclined plane okay so that's for inclined plane okay, so this is for uh, vertical motion so for example we have this uh, container let's say it has a cross-sectional area a and it contains liquid at a high h so how to compute for the pressure at the bottom of the container the pressure from your uh, fluid mechanics is basically equal to the unit weight of the liquid times the height of the uh, liquid that is for the case for example that the acceleration is uh, zero so here what about if this container will be moving upward or uh, downward so let us assume let us assume that this container is now accelerating accelerating upward okay so let us consider the liquid in this container if this accelerating upward okay let, but before that we have this liquid has its own uh, weight we need a force to accelerate this container upward kailangan natin ng parang panghila or 
uh, pang tula. So the force needed to push or pull this container to move uh, vertically. So let's say this force, that is the force, right, the force F. So again, since it is accelerating upward, it should be acted by the reverse effective uh, force. So that is equal to the mass times acceleration. So take note, if we say reverse effective force, or that is the second law of motion by Newton, it always opposes the motion. Okay, the mass times the acceleration. Then we have by mechanics, this is summation forces vertical equal to zero, assuming upward forces to be positive. So what are the upward forces? That is the applied force F minus weight is always downward since the motion is upward, REF is also downward. Equal to a zero. We have the force is now equal to the weight plus the reverse effective uh, force. So we have the equivalent of weight is equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity. Equivalent of REF, or if we are to compute for the mass, right, the mass is equal to the weight, this is divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So again, from this equation, we have the force is equal to, that is the weight, plus equivalent of REF is the mass times the acceleration. So we have the force is now equal to the weight, Plus, what is the equivalent of mass? Mass is equal to weight over the acceleration due to gravity. So it's the same as weight over G multiplied by the acceleration. So we can factor out the weight. So we have an equivalent of the force. It's now equal to okay, the weight. This is multiplied by 1 plus the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, from your fluid mechanics, how to compute for the weight? Okay, so, if you are to recall, we have a unit weight. That is the gamma. Okay, unit weight is the same as the weight divided by the volume. So, we are having well, it's weight over volume. So, how to compute for the equivalent of the weight? The equivalent of the weight is the same as gamma, that is the unit weight, multiplied by the volume. So from this container, what is the equivalent of the liquid's volume? What is the volume of the liquid? So volume is, let us assume that this, the volume is equal to area, the cross-sectional area of the tank, multiplied by the height. So we have the equivalent of the weight is equal to gamma, volume is the cross-sectional area of the container, multiplied by the height. So we have to substitute the equivalent of the weight from this equation. We have now the force is now equal to the equivalent of weight is okay, the equivalent of weight is gamma cross-sectional area times the height. This is multiplied by we have 1 plus the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, dividing both sides of the equation by the area so what is force over area? Force over area in strength of materials is, that is stress. But here in fluid mechanics or hydraulics, it is pressure. We have the pressure is now equal to gamma H, the unit weight of the liquid times the height of the liquid, multiplied by 1 plus, and 1 plus the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So that is the combination of the pressure, and the pressure at the bottom of the tank, if it is moving upward, so it will be plus or positive here, if the motion is upward. What about downward? If it is downward, the pressure will be equal to gamma H, this is multiplied by 1. So if it is upward positive, if it is downward, minus, minus A over G. So if the motion is downward. So that is for vertical motion of containers with Decrease. Okay, so first example natin, or first example under uh, relative equilibrium, this is uh, horizontal motion. So an open rectangular tank mounted on the track is 5 meters long, uh, 2 meters wide, 2.5 meters high, is filled with water to a depth of 2 meters. What maximum horizontal acceleration can be imposed on the tank without spilling any uh, water? So leaving ko lang yung given, we have a 5 meter, a long tank, 
2.5 meters high para yung laman ay contain only 2 meters of water. We have a free space of uh, 0.5 meters. And take note, uh, 2 meters perpendicular to uh, the board. So we are looking for the acceleration. So let us assume it will be accelerating to the right. Alright, so it will be accelerating to the right. Alright, so since the requirement is without spilling any water, what is the expected rise of liquid at the rear wall of the tank? So we have a free space of 0.5 meter. 0.5 na yung free space natin. So ang dapat na iangat ng liquids dito sa likod is only 0.5 meter without uh, spilling. So we expected that and the water will rise on the rear wall at 0.5 uh, meter. Okay, for the roll class of without spilling, kung walang matatapon, uh, without spilling, basically we are just relocating the volume. So the volume from this uh, portion of, of the tank, the volume from this portion will be just moved on the rear wall or on the rear part. So we will be having the inclination of the uh, the inclination of the liquid surface. Let's say that is a uh, theta. Okay, this is also theta. This is also theta. Okay, this, uh, triangulation. So we have if the water will rise at 0.5 meter, if the rise is 0.5 meter on the rear wall, it is expected since we are just relocating volume, it is expected that the water will go down on the front wall at a height of 0.5 meter. All right. Take note. This is only applicable here. There's no water spill or without spilling any uh, water. So we have similar triangle. The water will rise here 0.5. The water will go down here 0.5. If the length of the tank is at uh, 5 meters, I think it is obvious that this distance is 2.5 meters. Just half of the 5 meters. So if we consider this triangle. Okay, this is 0 0.5 a meter, this is 2.5 meters, so this is theta, the same as the inclination of the liquid surface, we can use tangent. So we have the tangent of theta is the same as the acceleration, divided by the acceleration due to gravity, is equal to opposite, that is equal to 0 0.5 meter, divided by adjacent side, we have 2.5 meters. So we have the acceleration divided by, this is... 9.81 is not equal to 0 0.5 this is divided by 2.5 so you have the acceleration uh, the maximum acceleration without spilling any water that will be we have 0.5 divided by 2.5 I multiply by 9.81 so the maximum acceleration without spilling any water is 1.962 this is this is meters per second squared, so we have meters per second squared. Right, this will be the maximum acceleration without spilling any water. Right, so just an additional uh, question for, for this problem. So this will be an open tank, uh, minsan, uh, the requirement is what is the volume spilled at a given acceleration. So, for example, I we uh, from the previous problem we are able to compute for the maximum acceleration without spilling any water. The acceleration is 1.962 meters per second squared. That will be the acceleration without spilling any uh, water. So uh, let's say we have the acceleration imposed on the tank will be six meters per second squared. So for sure, a uh, uh, volume of water will be spilled. So how to determine or how to compute that volume? So at 6 meters per second squared. So we have, again let us assume that this tank will be accelerated to the right. And it is expected that the liquid surface will be uh, inclined. or All the liquids will be compressed at the rear wall of the uh, rear wall of the tank. We have the length of the tank is equal to uh, 5 meters and the height, the total height of the tank is uh, this is uh, 2.5 meters. 
So you need to assume, or there are, you need to assume what will be the location of the edge of the water here in front if the acceleration is 6 meters. One possibility is that the liquid surface I mean, we will still be having liquid okay, on this wall of the front or on the front wall. Or that is one possibility. So pwede yan, pwede uh, yung liquid surface is nandito pa sa front wall or the liquid surface will be no more on the front wall or the front edge of the liquid will be the same already on the floor of the tank. So how to compute for uh, the volume still? So since we have the, the acceleration is given, we can determine the equivalent angle. So this is the tangent of theta is called the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to uh, gravity. So let's say I will assume first that the liquid or the water is still in contact with the front wall. So we have a tubing pa dito sa front wall. So how to how to check? Okay, so let's say this is uh, theta. I okay, take note the height of the wall is only 2.5. So let us check if we have still water in contact with the front wall. Let's say it is uh, case one. So let's say this is case one. So we have the tangent of theta is equal to, okay, let's say this is, we are to assume a height. Let's say this is y. And the adjacent side will be the length of the tank, that is 5 meters. So we have the tangent of theta is equal to the given acceleration for this problem is 6. This is divided by 9.81 is equal to so tangent of theta opposite that is y divided by okay, what is our adjacent side? So tangent of theta opposite is y adjacent side is or the adjacent side is the length of the tank that is 5. So let us check if we have an acceptable value of y. So for the computation of the value of y, that is 5 times 6 divided by 9.81. So the resulting value of y will be equal to 3.05 meters. So is this value acceptable? So katanggap tanggap ba yung height ng tubig daw sa likod? is 3.5 meters, so obviously, no, it's not acceptable or unrealistic for a reason, the height of the tank is only, the height of the tank is only 2.5 meters, which means the first assumption is uh, wrong. So, wala nang tubig or there's no water in contact with the front wall. Okay, let us assume the next, the next assumption for this case is that the front edge of the liquid will be on the floor of the tank. Okay? And this is already the value of uh, theta. So we'll be having the height of, we are using the mass, the height of the container, the total of the container, that is 2.5 meters. So all you have to do is determine this dimension. What will be the length of the base of this triangular prism of water? Triangular prism. So the triangular prism is volume. Yeah. So we have x. So again, this is the length of the tank that is 5 meters. So it is cheap. Acceptable value should be less than 5 meters. Dapat mas mababa sa 5 meters. Since yung front edge ng liquid natin, liquid surface natin, is assumed to be on the floor of the tank. So let's say this is, we have case uh, number 2. So again, that is, the tangent of theta is equal to a over g equal to a over, uh, a over g, the acceleration is 6 meters divided by 9.81 equal to, okay, for this triangle, tangent opposite, we are maximi maximizing the height of the container, that is 2.5 meters divided by the adjacent side, it should be less than 5 meters, let's say x. So what will be the value of x? The value of x will be okay, 2.5 times 9.81. This is divided by uh, 6. So the value of x here is 4.0875 uh, meters. 
So this value is acceptable since it is less than 5 meters. So therefore, the correct assumption is that the front edge of the liquid is already on the floor at an acceleration of 6 meters per second. Now, how to compute for the volume? Uh, they not we are looking for the spilled volume. Okay? So, how to compute for the spilled volume? So, we may first determine the initial volume of water. So, what is the initial volume of water? Initial volume, the length of the tank is 5 meters, the height of water is 2 meters, perpendicular to the board, it is 2 meters wide. So, we have the initial volume is now equal to 5 meters times 2 meters high times 2 meters wide, perpendicular to uh, the board. So, we have the volume initial is equal to, and this is equal to 20 cubic meters. Alright, then this is. The volume, why did I compute for the value of x? This is uh, 4.0875. Why did I compute for that value? Okay, so this is 4.0875 meters. This is the volume of the remaining, uh, let's say, yes, volume of remaining water. Let's say, volume, this of R, volume remain at an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared. So we have the volume remain let's say this is V sub R. I have to compute for the volume of a triangular prism. Prism. <coughs> triangular prism, so this is area times uh, the width. So the area of a triangle, that is a right triangle, that is one half the base is, we have 4.0875, okay? And the height is, the height is over 2.5 uh, meters. That is the cross-sectional area of the triangular prism. To be a volume, multiplied by the width of the tank. What is the width of the tank? That is 2 meters. So this is multiplied by uh, 2 meters. So what will be the volume uh, remain? So if the volume remains, that is So the remaining volume will be equal to This is 10.21875 cubic meters So let's check So 4.0875 multiplied by 2.5 times 2 this is divided by 2. It's equal to 10.21875 cubic meters. So, how, the, how to compute for the spilled volume? Paano natin kukunin yung spilled volume? So, you have the spilled volume. Let's say this is the volume spilled is equal to volume initial okay, minus So how to compute for the spilled volume? This is the initial volume minus the volume remain. So bawa natin yung natapon. The initial volume of water minus the remaining volume of water, that will be the spilled volume. Let's say this is a volume spilled, volume initial, so 10 cubic meters less. Volume remain, this is 10.21875. So you have the volume spilled, it's now equal to So volume spilled will be equal to 9.78125 cubic meter. So this will be the spilled volume at this is at acceleration is called 6 meters per second. So usually, yeah, dapat open tank 
uh, normal name tanong or normal requirement is that what will be the speed volume at a given acceleration? 